58 of the National Assembly rules, when the chairperson is absent, members of the committee will elect one of the members to act as the chairperson. So I am going to facilitate that process. And therefore, members, can I please have nominations for the acting chairperson? Mr. Mamabulo. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Honorable uh, or Mrs. Zolega. Yeah, the chairperson has indicated that there should not be available and then uh, as per your move, I would like to nominate uh, Mrs. Adams so that she Thank can be the chairperson of the day. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mamabolo. Thank you. We have a seconder for Ms. Adams. Ms. Malumani. Thank you. Greetings to everyone. I'm seconding Mamabolo for that the chairperson can be. Honorable Adams. Thank you, Ms. Malumani. Ms. Adams, do you accept the nomination? Yes, ma'am Zoleka. I'm accepting the nomination. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any other nomination? I don't see any other hand. Thank you, members of the committee. Uh, Ms. Adams will chair the meeting as acting chairperson as duly elected. Over to you, Ms. Adams. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning to all on the platform. I noticed the presence of the deputy minister. Um, good morning to her and good morning to DSEX. Uh, good morning to the entity uh, Ned. Uh, Is Adams? Yes. You see, can you hear me now? Yes. Can yes, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. We lost you a little bit today, but we can hear you now. Okay, thank you so much. I hope that will not be the problem for the day because here is uh, windy and um, cloudy. So I hope that Netwell will not um, let us struggle. But welcome to all on the platform. It is Friday. Every one of us has, has other um, uh, uh, responsibilities to do, but this was the first uh, responsibility that we have to take care of for the day. So that is the meeting with uh, Tennis South Africa. Uh, DSEG will, will give us an overview and then we will allow um, Tennis South Africa to also talk to us today uh, what is the issues. But first, before we... Um, start with our meeting. Uh, the program is reflected on the screen. And everyone saw the, uh, uh, the agenda. The agenda is as follows. The welcome introduction, apologies, uh, and adoption of agenda. Then a DSEC overview on tennis, South Africa briefing. As you can see, that I don't want to read through the whole agenda. You can see it, it's flagged there. So I've already done the opening and the welcome. Our next point will be apologies. Mazoleka, any apologies? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, we have an apology from Ms. Julia, who is attending another portfolio committee meeting. And we also have an apology from the minister who is traveling to Qatar for the FIFA World Cup, as invited by his counterpart. And the acting GG will not be present also in chair uh, because he is supporting the deputy president at the military veterans workshop. And therefore, Ms. Khan will be leading the delegation from DSEC. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. 
um, members, the apologies that you heard there from um, the secretary. Uh, can we please have uh, adoption of the apologies? No, they are noted. They can be noted. Uh, they can be noted. Uh, thank you. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Excuse me, Madam Chair. I see a hand from the tennis Anthony. Okay, so a hand it's also me. from Anthony. If yes. Anthony can just talk to us. Anthony, uh, any apologies from your side? Uh, good morning. Thanks, Chair. Um, we have got an apology from our thank side. Thank you. One of our delegation um, member, Mr. Robin Baloy, unfortunately couldn't join us because he's not well. So um, yeah, that's an apology from our side. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Anthony, for that one. Apologies are noted and accepted. Uh, we have the agenda in front of us. As we have go through the agenda, can we please adopt uh, the agenda? Proposal for the adoption of the agenda. I move for adoption, adoption. Uh, Honorable Chairman Mawolo. Thank you so much. A seconder. Ms. Veronica. Thank you so much. Then on the agenda, we have the first point for a DSEC overview on tennis, Ms. Um, Somaya. You are leading the team, so will you please um, present your, your presentation to us? Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chairperson, uh, and good morning, honorable members. Uh, let me just quickly put my video on. Okay, I'm hoping that I can be seen. Yes, um, beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Um, good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, honorable members. Uh, good morning to Deputy Minister. Uh, who's present as well, to the President of Tennis uh, South Africa, Mr. Crooks, uh, and the Executive, uh, and to the colleagues. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I have the presentation should be flighted. I'm going to go through the slides quickly. Uh, I'm trying to see if it's on the... Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, Madam Chair... Um, the focus of our presentation, as per the portfolio committee notice of the meeting, was a briefing by Tennis South Africa on their governance issues and development of the sport in schools and provinces. Uh, Madam Chair, so our presentation would focus on the support that the department gives to Tennis South Africa in terms of those um, uh, areas of governance of uh, um, the financial support that we give to Tennis uh, South Africa, um, and then the issue of infrastructure development, because I think we've made uh, very, very serious investments through the MIG into the development of a world-class tennis precinct in Mahikeng, and we've included that in our report as well, Madam Chair. So next slide, please, ma'am. So, Madam Chair, in terms of the governance, Tennis South Africa hosted their annual general meeting on the 1st of October uh, 2022, which took place in Midrand in Johannesburg. And at this meeting, there were two new board members elected. Next slide. Uh, in terms of the financial support to Tennis South Africa in the 2021-2022 financial year, um, we provided 4.5 million rands to Tennis South Africa, and this was for the administration, for their programs and for projects. And the support was earmarked for the following priority areas. Um, the one was uh, the wheelchair tennis. The second one was capacity development and coaching support. Uh, the third area was schools tennis, and the fourth area was around development programs that tennis uh, had put into their business plans. 
Um, in this uh, current financial year, Tennis South Africa has not yet received the funding due to partial submission of legal compliance documents. Uh, Madam Chair, we must indicate that there were some uh, documents that uh, were brought to our notice quite late by our legal uh, unit. And we then forwarded to our federations for them to complete that report, that those documents. But we are now ensuring that hopefully by this week or so, by the end of next week, we finalize all of the uh, paperwork in terms of the transfers to uh, the federations uh, so that they get their, their funding for the year. Um, and then, uh, yes, so I, I have indicated, you know, that new legal documents that were guided by the National Public Service Act, the Nonprofit Organizational Act, and the Department of Public Administration regulations uh, had been given to the federations, and legal uh, source documents also included the tax compliance certificate uh, status and DPSA disclosure and certificate of registration for vetting uh, by the, of the legal documents. So we've had to attend to that, and that actually caused some of the delays in tennis getting their funding for this year. Um, in terms of some of the achievements in 21-22, uh, Madam Chair, the quad wheelchair tennis team uh, made uh, the uh, World, team, World Cup, I mean, the World Team uh, history as the first African team to reach the championship finals at the International Tennis uh, Federation's flagship in Portugal. And then there was a coaches mentorship program that was launched in 2018, where they trained 345 coaches, of which 55% were women, and 78% are actively involved in coaching at the moment. In terms of the Rising Stars program that uh, was funded and supported uh, a nationwide school sports tournament for primary, high school, and special schools uh, was uh, implemented and it attracted about 1,336 schools in 2022. Uh, this was an increase of 29%, and 400 of these schools were from really disadvantaged areas. Um, next slide. In terms of the tennis uh, further achievements, the development centers, over 50 players from development centers in uh, Soweto and Shwane, um, qualified, uh, there are, sorry, there are already 50 players from development play centers in Swane and in Soweto. And uh, they qualified for the SA Junior National Championships that took place in Durban. And the hosting of the W World 220 and the World 20 and the W225 events. This is the largest International Tennis Federation uh, women's uh, held in over a decade. And it was staged um, for, and I think this is, the cost was around 400,000. Um, Tennis South Africa will give us further details around that as well. Um, and the next slide, in terms of the school sports support to tennis in 2022-2023, uh, Tennis South Africa benefits from the uh, Department of Sport, Arts and Culture through the provision, through the provinces in terms of the conditional grant by the provision of equipment and attire that's provided to schools and the training of educators and community volunteers linked with the schools. Uh, Tennis South Africa participates at the Summer National School Sport Championships, which facilitates talent ID, talent identification, as the championships are used to select players for continental and inter international competitions. Um, and through this program, uh, the Tennis South Africa also benefits because the uh, Summer Games, the Nas Summer National School Sport Ch Championships also contributes to the development of young technical officials and coaches because during these championships, they are provided, they get the experience and exposure at this national level. And I think we've seen uh, many, many uh, achievements, not only in tennis, but even in football, where uh, one of the coaches now is being uh, an assistant coach to Banyana Banyana. So th this, this is a similar thing that we do with tennis as well and other codes so that it uh, um, 
So the capacity of coaches are built through these tournaments so that they can then move on to the major uh, 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 federations uh, events as well. Next slide. Uh, Madam Chair, um, Tennis South Africa is one of the 19 codes that are part of the uh, eminent persons group uh, transformation uh, uh, process. Uh, they submit their uh, EPG data sheets on an annual basis. Uh, and these data sheets then uh, provide for us a score uh, based on the self-set targets as well as the, uh, um, the prescribed targets in terms of the transformation charter and the, and the barometer. So the last report we had was in 2019. Uh, if you look at the category under the board and administration, tennis's board demographic were uh, reported as 59% white, 23% colored Indian, and 18% black African. In terms of the age groups, the male, senior, and underage teams, uh, and the youth groups, uh, the federation scorecard reflects a senior national male team of 50% white, 32% black African, and 18% colored Indian demographics. Uh, this was an increased from 17% in 2017. And the male under 21-23 was 50%, um, under 18, 75%, and the under 16 and under 17, 75% white. Uh, under 21-23 was 50%, under 18, 25%, under 16, 17 was 0% Black African. And under 21-23, and under 18 and under 16, 17 was 25% colored Indian. Uh, in terms of the national female senior and underage teams, the female tennis pipeline, as is the case with the male tap line, is incomplete, reflecting only one underage, eight, under 18 team with a reported demographic of 100% colored Indian and no black African and no white, uh, and no white uh, participants. Uh, Tennis South Africa revised their barometer forecast um, to reflect an unchanging Black African forward projected charter target until 2030. Uh, Madam Chair, in terms of the APG finding uh, under coaches and referee structures, Tennis's commercialized coaching structure was reported as 74% white, 23% black African, and three colored Indian in 2019. Uh, the medical and scientific support base, the Federation's medical and scientific practitioner support structure is underdeveloped, comprising only one support category, and that is in uh, physiotherapists who are 33% white and 76% black African. In terms of the school's structures, Madam Chair, the number of participating tennis playing primary and senior schools were reported as 713 and 520 respectively, reflecting a low percentage of participate, participating schools, that's of 5%. Uh, in terms of their club structures, there was an increase in members of the club structures. And in conclusion, they have met their, their barometer achievement was 69%, which is uh, uh, slightly higher than the expected 50%. Okay, in terms of infrastructure, Madam Chair, um, in 2019, the Mahi King, uh, uh, it must be noted that the infrastructure that we're referring here to here, Madam Chair, comes out of the MIG allocation. And in 2019, Mahi local municipality uh, was recommended and gazetted for refurbishing and the construction of the uh, uh, Mabato tennis facility to meet international standards. So the, this was an existing facility. So they were looking at reverb, uh, reverb, refurbishing, but also doing further developments to that. So this is a project that is more long-term and it's being done in phases. Uh, so the municipality was allocated an amount of 20 million, which was a phase one, uh, and then for 2019 and 2020. And then in 2020, 2021, they received a further 20 million, and both phase one and phase two are now complete. <clears throat> In phase three, this 20 million rents was allocated for 2021 and 2022. 
and in phase four, uh, uh, and in, in this financial year, there's an allo allocation of 10 million 300,000. So in total, Madam Chair, the, for the four financial years, an amount of 70 million um, 300,000 has been allocated for a world-class international meeting international standards tennis precinct in Mabato. Um, and the funding for phase one and phase two was utilized for the upgrading of the tennis facility where there are 13 existing tennis courts with spectator seating, including one main center court with 1,800 seats. Um, and this has been uh, refurbished. There are two new courts that have been constructed along with ablution facilities, change rooms, a kiosk and parking. Um, and the two new tennis courts were constructed by a contractor that was accredited by Tennis South Africa. Now, the third phase will be constructed from scratch and the facility will consist of the outdoor international tennis court with a grandstand, which is accessible also to people with disabilities, and there will be ablution blocks underneath the facility. So, um, Madam Chair, so that's the biggest investment we've made thus far in any infrastructure from the MIG uh, over a multi-year uh, uh, um, uh, basis. Um, and this is now to actually uh, ensure that, you know, we have a facility just like Wimbledon and just like, you know, the um, where the Australian Open takes place. And this year as well, our team from the department together with Tennis South Africa and the uh, municipality did a benchmark exercise of a facility in, uh, in Australia. And we are still waiting for that report to come through, which we will share with the portfolio committee as well. So that exercise was done to see how are we now um, are going to looking forward, how are th these facilities going to be utilized and whether there are any gaps that we still need to identify in the existing facility. But be that as it may, Madam Chair, all of the, uh, the exercise to put this facility together was well consulted with Tennis South Africa, with experts looking at best practice, looking at what the international standards were, um, and hence that then informed how we proceed with this uh, facilities, the building of these facilities. Madam Chair, in addition to the, this world-class facility, we have multi-purpose sports courts that we have built. And in the municipalities, in the MIG already, you know, we've gone to 195 municipalities. And all the multi-purpose or combi courts that we have, you know, they have they make provision for five different codes of sport. And tennis is also one of those codes of sport that benefit not only from the MIG. Uh, infrastructure uh, grant uh, where the facility is built, there is a multi-purpose sports court, but all the schools where we have the multi-purpose sports courts that are built by the sports trust also have tennis, uh, a provision for tennis in terms of the five codes of sport that can be played on that surface. So that is the further um, support that tennis gets in terms of infrastructure development. Madam Chair, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Samaya. Um, welcome, uh, Minister. I saw the Minister just join us on, on the meeting. You are welcome, Minister. You have heard the presentation from uh, Ms. Sumaya. It was very good to hear that um, there is uh, another entity like uh, your tennis South Africa. And it's good to see that um, the schools are also accommodated in this uh, type of sport. I will not allow now questions. I will wait until the the last presentation um, are presented to us. On our agenda, the briefing of Tennis South Africa, but before they are giving us the briefing, 
uh, Tennis of Africa, can you please introduce your team, seeing that it's the first Please, can you please uh, introduce your team to us? And after that, you can uh, continue with your presentation as Tennis South Africa. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And good morning to everybody. Good morning, Minister, Deputy Minister, and uh, Acting uh, DG. It's very good to be back in front of you. Uh, it's, it's always an extremely positive uh a positive way to communicate sorry mr uh, antoni you are very soft we can't hear you you are soft can you please move more to the, uh, a speaker thank you sorry for that madam chair can you hear me now is that is yes, that better yes Yes, Thank you. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, good morning to you. Uh, my name is Gavin Crooks. I'm the President of Tennis South Africa. Um, I greet the Minister, the Deputy Minister, and the Acting DG, and all the members of the committee. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to address and engage with you. We always find these engagements extremely positive. Can I introduce the team that is with us today from Tennis South Africa? I have Riyad Davids who is the Vice President of Tennis South Africa. We have Belina Mashido, who is the Chairperson of the Wheelchair Committee of Tennis South Africa, and Anthony Murathani, who is our Commercial Manager in charge of anything to do with uh, publicity and anything to do with commercial. As we indicated up front, Mr. Robin Beloy uh, is unable to join us this morning due to ill health. Uh, he would have been our fifth member of our presentation committee. Uh, the DG has, has stolen a whole lot of our thunder this morning, and I compliment her for her, uh, her excellent report. Uh, a lot of the information that is in our report uh, has been uh, shared with you in, in her report. Uh, we believe that Tennis South Africa is in a very good space. As uh, the minister, uh, as the DG indicated, uh, we had our annual general meeting in October. Uh, in terms of our constitution, we have a rotating basis on which board members are elected. Our full board election was in 2021, when the entire board uh, was uh, was uh, in the uh, it was in the was re-elected or was was elected. Uh, we also updated our constitution. Uh, included, and, and this will be dealt with by Mr. Riyad Davids under the governance structures. Uh, our finances, like any smaller federation, uh, are always carefully managed. Uh, our, uh, I can say to you that we adopt a very concert conservative uh, basis of accounting, uh, and we, we deal with that on a, on a strictly cash basis. Um, I will leave uh, the remainder of uh, this presentation to, to my colleagues uh, who will highlight the important aspects uh, in order to keep uh, the presentation brief. The detail is in the, uh, is in the presentation that is ahead of you. Can I hand over to Riyad Davids who, who will deal with the, the aspect of, of governance, which is a particular line item that uh, the committee wishes to hear. Thank you. Hi, good, good morning. Good morning, Minister, Deputy Minister, Chair and Deputy DG, uh, Ria Davids, Vice President of Tennis South Africa. Uh, Anthony, could we just ask you to move through to the governance structures? There we go. Thank you very much. So Tennis South Africa, as you see, we sit within a, a group of three uh, world governing bodies. So we have the ITF, which is our, our mother body. And as I said, we have a 9% share or vote nation alongside Canada, who also have nine shares and they're the current Davis Cup champions. Only the USA, England, France, Australia, and Germany have more than us. They have 12 votes. We're the highest in Africa with nine. Tunisia just got upgraded from five votes to seven votes. And Egypt uh, comes in at third with five votes. So as you can see, we are a very, very important member of the international committee. We also actively participate in committees and commissions of the ITF, CAT, and SASCOC, where we are very, very well representative, represented, and we're one of the most involved and active national federations. 
We're also a member of the Olympic Committee, Thavaya Saskok. And as Gavin said, we have not missed an AGM and we ensure compliance across all structures, be it our international, national, provincial, or district. I can give you one example where we had to dissolve the old structures within Western Province, Poland, and SWD. And we, we formed the new districts which are, are compliant with the EPG and the case for sport. We are very inclusive and compliant by ensuring wheelchairs, schools, and universities are represented within our structures and in our board. Our updated constitutions are compliant to SASCOC, the ITF, and the IOC. And all these level of organizations gave input and comments uh, as well as accepting our, our new constitutions. We have a new membership code of conduct. We also have a code of ethics for our board the members and all our directors. We ensure compliance with all of these. We lifted the bar on popular compliance. We also have a safeguarding policy and we have a dedicated safeguarding officer. We work on a zero tolerance approach and we deal with many matters on an ongoing basis, but we always make sure that we don't sweep under the carpet and we deal with every possible report uh, in the strictest confidence, but we also make sure we adhere to, to strict policies in terms of that. Something more to add, Anthony, if you just go on to the next slide, please. Thank you. As you see, we have uh, 11 committees and 12 board members. We absolutely ensure that we have representation across the board and with our committees and our board members, we make sure that we are, but remain compliant in everything. And we actually do address things like risk and ethics, transformation, innovation. We have a special one just looking at women's tennis, high performance. And then we also include officiating juniors and seniors so that we make sure that we run all our structures across the board. In terms of our elected board members, next slide, please, Anthony. So if you look at our board demographics, we have 41% is black and 58% is white. Although on our elected board members, we are fully compliant, we have 50% black. And there are special ongoing discussions with special interest groups whether we should alternate between white and black nominee every two years to make sure that even in the full board, we remain 50% uh, of, of each uh, group. In terms of gender, we, we subscribe to gender equality, and we have tasked our provinces and districts to achieve gender parity to enable women to come through our structures. And in that way, we'll make sure that when we, we do have women on our board, they've come through our structures, and they're not just there in, in, in name or face, but they are actually fully conversant in it and they become active members of our board and it, it doesn't take anything away from the women that are currently there it's just that if we don't have it on from the base level upwards it's very difficult to appoint from the top down uh next slide anthony in terms of uh, staff democratic demographics at our head office it's 50 percent black of which 50 percent is female and we're very proud of, proud of our staff uh, demographics and then next slide I don't know if there's time for this, you can let me know, but we just want to speak about membership. So, you know, we had a COVID pandemic, but for as South Africa handled COVID very well, we as, a, as an institution also handled COVID very well, and our numbers actually grew exponentially by more than 50% across the COVID one. And we really want to thank the minister and everybody involved with government for allowing tennis to return that quickly so that we became one of the few sports that from the 30th of June, in 2020, we're back on court. And as I say, we ran a very tight COVID uh, policy. We had no COVID cases. And as I say, our membership grew. Thanks. Uh, and I'll leave the rest up to, to Gavin to take over finances and business. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, as I indicated in my introduction, uh, we adopt a, a particularly concerted, conservative method of accounting, uh, where we, we deal with everything on a, on a cash receipts and a cash payments basis. Uh, um, and uh, on that basis, it, it serves us very well. Once again, uh, this is, I think, something like the 19th year that we have had an unqualified audit report uh, for our 2022 annual financial statements. Uh, as with all federations, there was a matter of emphasis, which is the aspect of going concern, uh, but uh, the auditors did not uh, uh, did not indicate that it was anything more than a matter of emphasis. 
Uh, our figures, once again, are, uh, are that said, are, are, are pleasing in terms of the growth of our turnover and the support from our sponsors, uh, and uh, and looking to um, to 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 at least uh, maintain uh, our overheads uh, and keep those uh, within spec. The slide is uh, in front of you. I don't intend to to go through uh, the devil in the detail on that. If we go to the next page, uh, thank you, Anthony. Page 19, uh, it provides you with a breakdown uh, of how um, our overhead or our expenditure was um, uh, expended, uh, of which 48% uh, uh, was, was effectively uh, spent on, on transformation investment, which is a priority uh, in, in our organization. Uh, the, the forthcoming year's finances uh, are uh, likewise uh, uh, looking quietly positive. Uh, we are engaging with a number of additional sponsors. But I think uh, the most important thing that we are looking to achieve in terms of a, a financial strategy is to ultimately become a self-sustaining business enterprise because uh, any feder every federation needs to be a self-sustaining business enterprise. And on this regard, uh, we are looking to... Um, uh, to uh, a project 250, which is ultimately to obtain uh, a world tour event and to reinstitute uh, the SA Open for both men and for women. Uh, Riyadh, uh, Mr. Davids indicated that we uh, rate or rank equally with a country like uh, Canada uh, in terms of our voting power. And if you look at how they run their business of tennis in Canada, uh, they are very dependent uh, and are successful because of the funds that the the Federation makes out of its uh, Rogers Cup, which is a WTA 1000 and ATP 1000. So in summary, uh, our finances are sound and solid, uh, unqualified uh, audit reports, and uh, uh, and that it uh, provides uh, sponsors and our membership, and I hope DSEC uh, and government uh, with the confidence uh, that we know how to run our business. Thank you very much. I'll now hand over to... Uh, um, to uh, Mr. Anthony Murathani, who will deal with our schools and our transformation and wheelchair. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin. Um, good morning, all. Um, I'll just quickly touch on um, the strategic focus on schools. Um, as, as earlier, the DDG mentioned that we have um, launched a, a schools program, I think, which I believe is, is, is a game changer called the Rising Star Tennis. So it was launched uh, back in 20, 2019 um, and 2022 is actually the third year of the program. And uh, that slide basically just highlights the growth of the program since its, in, uh, uh, since its inception. So year one, we had uh, only, it was only primary schools and we had uh, 365 schools participating and in that year, only 14% were, uh, were schools coming from non-fee paying schools. So that is your uh, previously disadvantaged schools. And in year two, we doubled the number of uh, schools that participated to 797 um, with a 34% um, uh, participant uh, from non-fee paying schools. So in year three, which is 2022, we have seen an, uh, another uh, 29, a great increase, which is 29% in schools participation. Um, which is um, the, with a 39% uh, uh, participants from uh, previously disadvantaged schools, which I think is an incredible increase, um, especially from non-fee-paying non -fee schools. And the reason why I say that is because we realize that um, the reason why we don't have as many uh, quintal one, two, three schools participating in a sport like tennis is the issue of uh, infrastructure. So many schools don't have facilities. So there's a huge uh, lack of, there's a huge uh, shortage of facilities. So, but we have adopted a training uh, 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 um, approach where we're trying to get, we have introduced hubs and development centers. And I'll speak to that in our development section where we get in schools to play at um, uh, municipality, municipal or communal facilities to play tennis. So uh, realizing the, the, the shortage or rather the barriers that exist in terms of uh, school participation in tennis, there's nearly a million rent in this year alone that has been donated, um, uh, that has, has been spent to procure equipment, which includes um, tennis rackets, mini nets, and um, tennis balls, which has been donated to 48 schools, which fall within the quintal one, two, three schools. Um, and it, it was strategically, we had to look at schools with potential in different parts of the country. Elon mentioned some of the beneficiaries come from um, Namakwa in the Northern Cape, 
and with some uh, from um, um, Pumalanga and uh, some schools in Beaufort West in the Western Cape. So um, we also identified a school called Baigahez Primary Schools. It's in the east end of Johan in, of Gauteng. And um, we upgraded their tennis facilities. Today, the schools, the school have got a new facility that they're playing on. And we have seen an incredible uh, increase in, in participant at the school. So we just wanted to highlight that. And in the next slide, The next slide uh, we have got, we also introduced a program called the Rainbow Kids Program. So the Rainbow Kids Program is, is it's, it's basically looking to uh, create a fun, a more exciting uh, way to, uh, to get more kids playing tennis, especially at the, 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 the young age, from the ages of four to 10 years. So this, this program has really uh, grown uh, incredibly and now it's, it's part of uh, some of our junior tournaments that are hosted in almost every part of the country, different provinces. Um, I mean, I was, I was chatting to our coaching department. And I think the number has actually doubled since we've launched the program. And we are seeing many more kids in different parts of the country getting to play tennis. And, and it's more affordable. They're getting more opportunities to play. And they actually get to uh, advance quite quickly to get into uh, 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 desired areas of playing junior tennis. And just and a quick overview on transformation and development. Um, so I think Gavin mentioned uh, a, a bit around the transformation uh, policy that we have. And, and I think the key focus of our transformation is to ensure that we provide access and we remove as many barriers to entry, especially looking at um, uh, communities in previously disadvantaged, looking at players, coaches, officials, as well as uh, administrators. But I think I need to in, uh, stress this also that it's very important for us to ensure gender balance. And um, we, we, we are achieving this, and I think we're getting right through one of our programs called um, uh, Coaches Mentorship Program, which aims to empower women in, in coaching. And we have at the moment uh, empowered at 345 coaches, and all those coaches are from rural and township communities. And um, the biggest focus there is the empowerment of women. And... Uh, which, which we are seeing the uh, uh, great involvement of women in that space. And most importantly, the equality for dis disability sport, which, um, I mean, I think we've, we have achieved a great success with wheelchair tennis, as a great, which has got a great success story. Yeah, and this, the pillars of player development. Um, so this slide basically talks to some of the items that I've mentioned in the previous slide. So access to facilities and equipment, that is through, uh, we are, but partnering with local governments to ensure that we this we get to, we subsidize what we have to ensure we offer our communities um, uh, more equipment and getting facilities for them to play and we have launched as the DG mentioned uh, uh, we have got growth point national development centers so we have launched four centers across the country and I'll share to that uh, uh, shortly we also have got provincial development hubs in different provinces across the country and uh, the access to coaching speaks to the program I just mentioned which is the BNP Paribas Coaches Mentorship Program, are looking to empower uh, uh, black coaches, mainly women. And um, also the national centers, which I just mentioned, and with, with the hubs also, and lastly, the access to playing uh, opportunities, which talks to the Rising Star Tennis Program, which is, I think, quite uh, probably the biggest schools program that exists in the country, and the Rainbow Kids Program, and lastly, the local junior tournament. Moving on to the next slide, um, just a quick uh, overview. And I just want to, I think there was an error in the, the reporting from the DDG in terms of the uh, participants uh, from, uh, from our development centers. So we have launched four development centers um, in one, uh, it's in the heart of Soweto in Javavu. Uh, we have the second one in Atridgeville, um, the third one in Durban, uh, and the, last, the, third, the fourth one in the Western Cape. And the DDG mentioned uh, that, uh, which is exciting news, that incredible facility that has been uh, built or refurbished in Mafiking uh, will shortly be launched as the fifth national development centers for tennis. Um, what, this set, what this centers do is we offer coaching and uh, uh, free access to coaching, uh, equipment, uh, 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 funds for kids to travel and participate. Um, and we, we pay salaries to coaches that work at those centers. So each center is linked to about 10 satellite, five to 10 satellite hubs. 
So meaning you've got uh, small hubs which are feeder to the center. So we, we do a talent identification from those centers. And um, we also made an emphasis to ensure that each of the hubs is then linked to at least four schools, four to eight schools. So each hub adopts four to eight schools and they service those schools. And it's mostly schools that don't have tennis facilities. So that is just to give you an, an overview around our national development centers. And um, this basically just summarizes it. You have the development center sitting at the top and linked to uh, a province at the hubs and then hubs uh, fit or rather service rural and township schools. So the programs that exist in the National Development Centers, um, is you've got a grassroots tennis program, wheelchair tennis program, juniors and senior tennis, a great focus on school program, as I mentioned, and also high performance. And yeah, I'll just hand over to my colleague, um, uh, Berina, to chat to a wheelchair, to chat more about wheelchair tennis. Good morning, everyone. Um, on the part of wheelchair tennis, wheelchair tennis was actually operating on its own as a separate entity. And due to lack of sponsors, we'll, TSA took over the operations management starting in 2019. And uh, also we, wheelchair tennis is, has actually a healthy program and we have about plus minus 24 schools that are active nationally with development programs. We also have considered, we are considered as a global leaders in wheelchair tennis development. And it is a very good thing because we are also, as wheelchair tennis South Africa, introducing wheelchair tennis in other countries. And we are also assisting them in development. Like the latest one that we did is, is Botswana. Um, the other thing is that Tennis SA has employed full-time coaches that, like my colleague has said, we've got lots of TSA and we, we've got TSA hubs that helps with coaching. And we also are paying those coaches to develop tennis in schools. We also have got grassroots players and high performance players and we help them with stipends. That makes them to develop and continue developing and participating in international and national tournaments. We, to mention a few, we've got Kotata Monchani who's under the program and also Lucas Sitole. And we, are also, we also have the upcoming ones like Alwandes Kosana. And we also help with traveling and medical assessments for all the players. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks, Belinda. I think just to add there uh, around wheelchair tennis is we, we at the moment have approximately a 500 active wheelchair tennis players across South Africa and um, about almost 400 of those players are in schools. So they are serviced as my employees have indicated at the, the, the schools and we have hired uh, full-time coaches that provide the, the uh, coaching uh, uh, service to the schools on a month, on a weekly basis. So that's where we sit. But I think just maybe important to mention that um, for the, I think this is the, probably the fourth year that Will Chetan sits without a sponsor. So we, we, that we used to, I think, host close to eight tournaments annually and we're able to provide as many uh, playing opportunities for players. But we unfortunately still sit with the challenge of having no financial support from uh, sponsors. And I, I, we are very grateful, I think, from the support we get from DSEC to, to keep this, uh, the program going. Um, yeah, I think that talks to that. That was just our last slide. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thanks very much, uh, Anthony, and thanks everybody for um, listening through that. I would just like to conclude by emphasizing our uh, Tennis South Africa vision, mission, and values statements, which are our vision is that we wish to see somebody playing tennis somewhere every day. And our mission statement is to enhance the quality of life for all South Africans of any age group by growing the sport of tennis at every level for everybody who wants to become involved. And our values are transparency, personal accountability, and sportsmanship. Thank you, everybody. And I trust that you enjoyed our presentation. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, we.
really appreciate the fact that we can could listen to you very carefully because the fact that you uh, included our schools was a very good idea. And um, we, as the committee, appreciate the fact that you can uh, could make time to meet with us so that we at least have an idea on what is going in within um, uh, tennis South Africa. Members, I, uh, I did notice the minister before we are going uh, into questions, I will just allow the minister to make his remarks um, so that we can have a feeling and also hear from his side, seeing that the department is support, financially supporting the tennis of Africa. Um, what is his feeling? on the, the progress done by South Africa. Over to you. Could you hear me? Members, could you hear me? Yeah, a bit. We can yeah, hear you, Chairperson. We can hear person. you, Chairperson. Yeah, but you're breaking a bit, but it's fine, we're hearing you. Thank you. Over to the minister. Thank you. Minister Nati M. Tuetwa, are you there on the platform? I saw you on the platform. Can you hear me or do you have any uh, network problems? Zoleka. Madam Chair, I will phone the minister to check what is going on, but I think in the meantime, maybe we can allow the deputy minister to make remarks in the while still try to, con to contact the minister. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Deputy Minister, thank you for being with us uh, this morning on a Friday morning whilst you have other responsibilities also to do, but you have choose to be with us this morning in the meeting. Can you please address us? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair, and good morning to the honorable members and good morning to the leadership of Tennis South Africa. Chair, I, was, I thought you would allow members to ask questions and, and we respond and then I'll come. I towards the end and I will make my, my comments at the end of the discussion. But otherwise, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, Minister, are you still talking? Because I can't hear anything. Members? I will allow you now to raise your questions if you have any. Now is the time for questions. Yeah, check the hands, Chair. Check the uh, hands. Yes, yes, I'm busy. Don't be in a hurry. I know it's Friday. I'm checking the hands. Uh, Yes, members, I noted the hands of member uh, Mama Bolo, second leaf, Ver Veronica Van Dijk, Amazondi, and Honorable Joseph, and then Honorable Malumane, in that order. I thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairperson. Just like you, my network is bad. I'll not open the video. You are right, it's Friday, man, and some of us are very youthful. We need to do things that uh, young people are doing. <laughs> Two questions quickly, Chairperson, uh, to the tennis board uh, or to the tennis delegation. In rural areas like uh, my Limpopo, the Northern Cape, where Mam Adams comes from, the Eastern Cape, where Mam Bitwiklani comes from, Northwest and so on. Um, I'm not seeing tennis then. I remember during our days at school and also in the township, 
We used to see people playing tennis at school, in the community, and so on. And we do have tennis courts, by the way. Then. So what are you doing to improve uh, tennis or to increase the number of players there so that we were able to see them on TV and also doing good? The other question will be with, with regard to young people uh, who are participating in tennis. I don't see them in the board. Are they participating in your elections? And uh, why are they not in the board of directors or your executives? Yeah, this will be my two questions, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sure. Honorable Veronica. Thank you, Chief, for the opportunity. My, um, my questions are as follows. Thank you first for the uh, presentation, positive presentation. I'm a priest with the development and achievements in the schools and wheelchair tennis. And I um, want to thank you for the support for tennis in Amaquilin. Most of the time, uh, these remote areas are neglected. And I see there's just one satellite tennis hub in the Northern Cape, maybe you can just um, let us know where that is allocated and if that is actually, if that does reach the Namakland area, um, because it's, um, Kimberley is mostly known as the hub for where everything happens and it's nine hours drive from Namakland and we have very poor communities in our area. Um, and then also I saw on the website that the Federation has a safeguarding policy. And um, while that is applaudable, uh, safeguarding also means support for victims of abuse. Um, I want to know what Tennis uh, SA has done to support the lady that was stabbed 16 times by a coach. Um, that was the Modderfontein Johannesburg incident. Um, it is also on record that this coach has also been selling drugs to athletes. And I yesterday received photos that shows that this um, that she still has metal pieces coming from her head. And I think it's important that federations need to speak um, out on abuse that uh, so that there can be accountability, especially now during the 16 days of activism against violence against women and children. So for the, that reason, I was just wondering if you gave any support to this woman. And then there's also the 15-year-old girl um, at the Kiro school that was raped by a 16-year-old uh, from the UK um, at the tennis tournament in Hillcrest. And the case is now with the prosecutor in Pinetown. Um, I want to know if there's um, in, in any way, uh, that uh, in what way uh, is tennis SA involved, if any. And then um, the coach at the Arthur Ashe Tennis Stadium in Soweto that raped and abused at least five girls I want to know uh, the stadium has been closed um, and I, I also understand and I speak under correction that all the coaches has been fired. I'm not sure you can maybe reflect on that um, if that is indeed the case. And um, I also understood that this coach, ma coach must uh, might still be coaching. Uh, do you have any knowledge of this and um, what has been done by Tennis S South Africa to monitor and address this and to ensure that no more young lives are ruined? Um, when uh, my question on the stadium, when will it be reopened? And um, if the coaches were indeed fired, when will they be replaced? Um, then on slide 11, with regards to the infrastructure report, uh, support by the department towards the um, Mabatu tennis facility, a crime, a criminal co a crime case was opened against the former um, um, municipal manager Tabo Makuna. Um, on two accounts of contravening the Municipal Financial Management Act. He was uh, involved in the VBS scandal and, <clears throat> and more than 90 million of that uh, municipality's money was paid over and only 7 million uh, was returned to the municipality. I want to know um, who monitored um, the money of this uh, th that was uh, given to the um, municipality towards this project and um, did the department actually follow up on the tender? Um, how can we be sure that uh, who monitored these projects? How can we be sure that the money was actually spent according to the guidelines of the MFMA? Thank you. That's all. Thank you very much, um, members. Before I give over to uh, Honorable Zondi, I will allow you to ask all your questions. And I hope that was the last all questions of Honorable um, Van Dijk. So I don't want to go into a second round for questions. 
finish your questions and then we will give over to the entity and the department to respond on your questions. Over to you, Honorable Zondi. Thank you very much. Good morning to the minister and the DM, the, the whole department, um, and, 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 and you and the, the colleagues Jefferson on the platform. Your question, Chair. <clears throat> the minister, the minister uh, talked about the sports infrastructure, especially in rural um, areas. Recently, um, on TV and in this uh, committee, uh, he continues to talk about it. I just want to know uh, from the entity, uh, what is their long-term plan in terms of youth development, especially in rural development, in, in rural areas and black townships? I, 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 I think Honorable Mamabulo uh, 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 asked the question, but I think I, 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 was, I was covered a bit. The second question, Chair, is the Tennis South Africa has the potential of creating sustainable livelihoods at a, a competitive level. How many black players are playing at a competitive level and how sustainable is their participation from an income level? The third one, Chair, the performance of Tennis South Africa from its strategy lacks the diversity of revenue streams and needs to increase funding sources. How is the sponsorship landscape from tennis in South Africa compared to the global participation? And what is the level of participation of tennis in Africa? The last one, Chair, what are the challenges in wheelchair tennis? And what is the plan of Tennis South Africa to address the challenges identified. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Zondi, for that question. Honorable Joseph. Uh, thank you, um, Chairperson. Good morning to the Ministry and the Department and uh, Tennis South Africa. Um, Chairperson, I've got a few questions. I'm, I'm covered by Member Veronica, I, I, would, I, I must say that I'm, 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 I'm very concerned on the issues that Member Veronica raised, and I want to ask the department to really follow up on that statements and questions raised by Member Veronica. It's very serious. Uh, Chairperson, I, I want to um, start by asking a question on, there was a slide from Tennis South Africa that referred to participation, who or what influence you to take up tennis. Um, my concern in, in that one of the bullet points was um, easy access to local facilities, which only reflected 15%. Uh, this is against the, all the good stats of um, membership, the growth, and, and so on, which I'll come to later on. But I, I'm just concerned about that percentage. It, for me, it's, it's a bit low. Um, and then there's also a slide later on that it explains uh, um, access to facilities and equipment, um, which which ties me ties my question into that uh, 15 15 percent uh, uh, in one of the slides. I would also would like to support the question on. Um, on, on the disabled uh, tennis players and ask actually, my question is how do the disabled athletes, players get support to get to these facilities being faculty are disabled. I would like to know if they are appointed, if they are uh, permanently appointed uh, CEO or CFO, part-time or full-time. And I'm raising this question in, in, in conjunction with the uh, with statement made by the Deputy um, Director General on the, the vetting of legal documents, which I'll get to also as a question. But I wanted just to know clarity if they, I think in government, uh, looking at all the entities, not specifically this one, but 
that the treasury should have a bigger influence on the on the CFO's appointments um, and public service a bigger appointment on the on the CEOs. Um, uh, Chairperson, my question on on uh, I want to first of all congratulate uh, Tennis South Africa on on the on the on the growth in the membership post COVID membership, and also congratulate them on their achievement of being the first Africa Quad wheelchair team to to reach the finals. I think it was in Paris. So congratulations on that achievement. But I want to ask a question on the. On that membership growth from 19,000 to 32,000, uh, I would like just to have an explanation on, on how that um, uh, growth is measured in terms of the fees and the affordability. Because the fees um, figures I looked at is not growing. Um, and, and, and I'm not too concerned because it should be should be affordable. But my question is, the schools that, that Tennis at Africa is speaking about, um, and the learners are they do they register as a as one uh, uh, organization, or or is the, is the is this growth based on clubs and members in communities uh, or institutions high of higher learning with the with the students there? I just wanted clarity on where that uh, growth, uh, where the focus of that growth is in what categories, um, and 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 how. It, if how it remains affordable, um, or is there a free um, uh, area where there's where there's no as there is no fee schools? Is there a no fee membership to to play tennis? Um, in terms of the department, I want to thank Ms. Khan for um, for the um, for the presentation, and I want to this at this stage also congratulate the ministry and the department on the on the. It's a bit off the point, but I have to say it on the on the draw that was so successful. It was good to watch it on on, on television, and they all look beautiful. Um, my question to to um, I want to also um, um, support uh, the department on on the promotion of good governance. And hence, I can pick up on many entities their reluctance to release money unless there's compliance. So my question on the vetting. Uh, is not so much on, on, on the legal documents, which I understand. I want to ask the question on, is there also waiting on the board members or on the CFO or the CEOs um, that, that does this, that have to do this important work? Um, but it was just a question on the side, on the side, general question. On the EPG report, I want to, I note the, um, the, 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 the breakdown and the composition of, 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 the, of the board and the administration. Now, I would like to see if that uh, figures of 59% and 23% and 80%, um, how that will reflect if you split the, the board and the administration. Um, I think the, the one slide of the board was more clear, but we would like to see in the administration what is the, um, what is the uh, demographics of representativity or diversity in the administration and the senior appointments. In the administration, um, a chairperson. Then I think my last point was just to uh, to ask the the department: is the four point five million? What 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 is the the basis of four point five million? Um, uh, other words, why is it not a donation or contribution of twenty million? I understand there's a lot of money, the 20 millions, that the three phases that went into infrastructure, but I just wanted to know um, from 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 Ms. Khan, um, what 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 is the motivation for 4.5 million um, um, in, in relation to the growth that I've heard now from Table Tennis of Africa, and and um, and and maybe I should be, I should ask um, what is the growth been in terms of the the last three years and and uh, and going forward the next financial year to to support um tennis south africa thank you very much for the opportunity chairperson thank you uh, very much uh, honorable joseph honorable malumane
Madam Chair, it looks like Ms. Malumani has lost connectivity. Uh, I will also try and contact her. Okay, thank you, uh, um, Zoleka. I also have a few questions to ask. I will start with uh, Tennis South Africa. My first question is, what is the economic value or economic contribution? And then among the, amongst the age group above 35 years, what are the racial composition and gender contribution? And uh, what is the demographic profile of the registered coaches? and registered officials. And my last one to uh, Tennis South Africa, what are the targets of expanding rural and township schools and community facilities as part of the national development centers structures? And then my questions to, um, the department, the financial support uh, represented from uh, uh, DDG, Sumaya, there was fi uh, mentioned financial support of 4.5 million. And they also noticed that uh, there was wheelchair tennis 24 active schools, that is very good. And the school tennis, uh, that one is brilliant for me that uh, sport are uh, going back to schools again and then the development programs. If, if we can, the department can just give us a briefing what kind of de development programs they, they, they have under the development with that amount of money. And then um, the infrastructure support, the amount of seven, 70 million to the local municipality of Mafi King municipality. Was there any progress reports on, on, on that amount of, of money? And then the last one also I notice of I, I, I heard about the presentation from uh, DDG that 195 municipalities um, benefit from the ring fence and all of that. Can, can we as committee please have all the names of the municipalities who benefited from this uh, um, ring fence uh, programs. I thank you. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Ms. Malumani is back on the platform and we have Mr. Mklongo's hand up. Thank you so much. Uh, Honorable Malumane, you can raise your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Yeah, you know, it will be very, very difficult because if it, it will be the reputation, it will be my apologies because of the issues of network. Let me also take this opportunity and greet our Deputy Minister in Bogoto, the Department Officials, Tennis SA Leadership, Honorable Members and our staff. Uh, Chair, my question, it will be, basically in the issues of rural and townships. I just want to check on the issue of in infrastructure in the rural areas and townships that, how does Tennis SA ensure that facilities are well maintained and are there any facilities that are depleted and those that are not in use? I also want to check on the uh, issue of the widely played spots, which is accessible in most of the urban areas. For example, you can check that Gauteng, KZN and Western Cape, 
where in Limpopo, these four provinces, it seems as if they are getting more privilege relatively to the development. But when it comes to Mpumalanga, Eastern Cape and the other provinces, the development is very, very low. So I just want to check what are the challenges there and what caused it and what is, is there any plan so that they can make Mpumalanga to develop on the issue of tennis. The other matter is the schools that they are participating in terms of sports. I just want to check on the rural areas, so how many they are and where they are, which schools, the names of the schools. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, members. Is there another hand? Uh, Honorable Maslonga, uh, you know the story <laughs> of you. You know the story of Janika in late. <laughs> you apologize. know the story of Jani came late. You I are late, I but know. nevertheless, let me give you, and you have to raise all your questions. There's no second round today. Thank you. <laughs> Acting Chairperson, where are the rules that says there's no second round? But nonetheless, I welcome the presentation. Good morning, <laughs> colleagues, and good morning, Chair, and visitors, and the department, and DM. Chairperson, I wanted to find out what was the reason for tennis South Africa to cut ties with Africa care challenges? Can they give us details exactly? I saw that they're saying logistics were not organized, but I need the details. What are the reasons and how are they going to promote women's, women in sports, especially in, ten, in tennis? That is the first question. And another question, I think I want to um, put more meat on uh, mama, mama, uh, the question from my colleague. What projects or what any development projects, especially in tennis, in rural areas, in Soweto, in rural uh, uh, townships like Emakaya, where we'll say tennis South Africa has contributed and things are happening like Endwe, Kwazulu Natal, deep rural areas. Can you see that? One of the things that I wanted to find out, what are the standards? of a, a fair play in tennis South Africa. And another question that I wanted to find out, what are the actual challenges for us to have a role models within a, a, a black townships to say Sepom Shongo is playing tennis and he's the role model that we can make sure that we promote tennis in South Africa. Those are the questions for now, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Maslongo. If you are saying for now, I repeat it, there will not be a second round. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, members, for all your questions. Now is the time for the department to respond followed by Tennis South Africa. The department led by DDG, Sumaya. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, and thank you to the members for the questions. Uh, let me go to the... Um, the issues that were raised with the department. Um, with regard to the uh, 4.5 million rands, uh, what is the basis of this here? Um, Madam Chair, let me firstly indicate the 4.5 million rands we provide to the, to the Federation. It is based on our normal allocation to the federations. We have, a hundred, we have 60 to 65 federations that we provide funding to on an annual basis. There is a process um, of applications. They send us their applications. We have a team together, that a panel together that looks at the applications and does an adjudication. And based on that allocation, then we would provide the funding to the federation. So that is where the 4.5 million comes from. 
And Madam Chair, Madam Chair also asked out of that 4.5 million, you know, there are um, there were different areas that we indicated we provide support to. And Madam Chair asked about what is the details of the development program. I will ask Mr. Nube, who is the chief director that deals with federation support to actually go into the details of that, uh, um, that funding. Um, then the issue of the, um, the 195 municipalities that have benefited from the uh, MIG allocation, Madam Chair, there are about 205 municipalities. So to date, since 2016, we have now through COCTA um, uh, built facilities in 195 municipalities. And the approach has been that we try and cover all of the municipalities before we go back again. We cannot go to all every single ward uh, at the moment. So we're trying to get to at least every municipality must first get something. And then we would then start to review how we uh, allocate uh, uh, more facilities to others, to other, um, to the municipalities again. So for to date, in with a small allocation that we have, we've managed to get to 195. So we're not too far from completing 100% of the municipalities. The challenge is that the budget has not increased. We've had initially when we started in 2017, 2016-17, uh, the budget was like about 300 million. And because of budget reductions, we've it's been reduced. So in this financial year, we have about 280 million rands. Uh, Madam Chair, we must understand that the money, the funding doesn't come directly to the department. The money is ring-fenced at COCTA. We then identify through the processes of the IDP working with the national, with the provincial federation, with the provincial government to identify the facilities. And then COCTA would transfer the funding directly to those municipalities. We then play a role to make sure that we provide the norms and standards for facilities development to the municipalities. And we work with them to look at what facilities must be built. And then they do all of the procurement around the contractors, the professional services, uh, et cetera, all the EIE, all the uh, environmental uh, impact assessment. They do that. And then they, um, uh, uh, we then just monitor on an uh, uh, ongoing basis, Madam Chair. And I think this for us is very critical. It's part of our indicator and we target at least 50 municipalities um, a year, but we normally exceed that target because we try and get to those municipalities that have multi-year facilities to also monitor them. So the money is not with us, uh, Madam Chair. And then with the with the 70 million, uh, the 70 million rands that has been uh, allocated to the to Mahi Keng, to the municipality for the uh, world class tennis facility. Again, Madam Chair, the money goes directly to the municipality. Um, there is a steering committee with Tennis South Africa and ourselves and the municipality uh, in terms of the progress, but the municipality accounts being the custodian of the money directly from the National Department of uh, Cooperative Governance. They then account uh, a, um, a directly for the funding. They do produce reports on an ongoing basis, on a quarterly basis. We do get reports of the, of the, uh, the progress on the facilities. Um, the, other area is uh, the area of the uh, EPG report. I will just check on the uh, the report of 2019 uh, and provide uh, Mr. Um, uh, Dennis with the uh, the split there, uh, Madam Chair. I don't have it immediately, but I can provide that that split. But let me also give to Mr. Nube to respond to some of the questions around the funding allocation and, and how the uh, development funds are allocated. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ms. Ken. Um, good afternoon, uh, 
Good morning, um, Honourable uh, Chairperson, and uh, good morning to the Minister and the Deputy Minister on the platform, the members of the Portfolio Committee, um, DDG and uh, President of uh, Penny South Africa and the Executive. Uh, I'm going to just touch on uh, two questions asked, uh, uh, Honourable Chair. The first one was on the um, was on the the vetting. Uh, it the vetting has primarily been uh, also focusing on just making sure that uh, um, the is confirmation uh, that uh, the members. Uh, who serve on the boards of federations or the executive of federations do have appropriate um, approvals from their respective, uh, for those who may be employed or working for the state um, uh, institutions and uh, government departments, that they do have appropriate uh, approvals from their respective departments to serve on those structures. Um, so the next uh, question was around the, the key focus uh, areas, particularly in terms of uh, uh, what the department um, uh, allocates or allocated to Tennis South Africa. Um, the areas are, are detailed in the business plan, which is um, submitted to the, the department and then assessed by the department, primarily around the matters of capacity building. Uh, obviously noting that uh, some of these areas would have been highlighted in the, uh, the last EPG report. So we look at those kind of deficiencies um, that the EPG report would have pointed out in their findings and recommendations so that they can be addressed by the, by the Federation. So capacity building would be one of them. Uh, the issue of ensuring that there is a good pipeline of development, uh, particularly in terms of junior athletes, um, would be uh, also one of them. And then most importantly, the noting that um, the, um, uh, the, the wheelchair, particularly wheelchair tennis uh, or a tennis that caters for people with disabilities is also a critical area uh, that will, they then will provide as well a, a, a support towards that. Um, uh, Honorable Cho Chair, perhaps also to mention that over and above that, we uh, uh, as a department will also um, look at a specific and individual athletes uh, to actually include in a dedicated um, a, a athlete support program from tennis and, and also with a good contingent that, that would be uh, athletes with uh, disabilities. So those would be the areas, uh, um, Honorable Chair, that um, would be covered, but I'm sure Tennis South Africa can also expand in terms of uh, providing the details uh, uh, if necessary. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much um, for, for your response on that. Uh, DDG, was that the last one yes. who respond on, on the issues of the department? So, uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, with regard to the issues raised by uh, Honorable Van Dyke, around the municipal manager uh, at the um, uh, Mafeking. I do not have that information, Madam Chair. It has not been brought to our attention that there were issues around that that affected the project that we were involved in with them. So I'm not able to give a comprehensive response to that question, Madam Chair. Um, thank you. Uh... DDG, uh, did all of your teams or yourself responded to the questions? Can we give uh, Tennis South Africa now the time to respond?
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Lady. Um, I'd like to answer the, the questions holistically in that there's a certain level of, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, there's certainly, there's a level of overlapping before I hand over to uh, Mr. Morathani, uh, Mr. Davids and, our, uh, and Belina from our wheelchair department. Uh, to question one relating to Tennyson in uh, in rural in the country areas and uh, and the seeming lack of tennis uh, in in rural areas, uh, a, a lot of the challenge relating to that is a combination of first of all capacity uh, in terms of tennis South Africa's capacity and the lack of capacity in the provinces and the districts and particularly amongst tennis administrators in in the in the provinces and in the districts. Uh, tennis administrators are almost totally, uh, totally uh, volunteers. Um, tennis is not their full-time occupation. And thus, as uh, Mr. Murathani has shared with you, we are looking to drive the process through the BNP coaching mentorship program where we are mentoring uh, coaches, particularly junior school teachers, um, into the roles of coaches and assisting um, and assisting them in terms of their business model uh, and uh, and encouraging children, uh, particularly those under the Rainbow Kids programs, to uh, to participate and play and play tennis in the rural areas. Clearly, one of the biggest challenges, though, remains the question of infrastructure and facilities. Uh, and uh, municipalities and rural areas clearly do not, uh, generally speaking, I must tell you, uh, uh, maintain tennis courts. Uh, tennis courts are extremely difficult uh, to maintain uh, at the best of times in any event. And in terms of sourcing service providers, uh, it's fair to say that that is a challenge. And I think it's also right to say in terms of the Deputy DG's comments around the whole Mafia King project, some of the challenges have been around the, the service provider and sourcing the right service provider and making sure that the correct level of work has been done. Uh, we at Tennis South Africa have provided a certain level of technical advice on, on that, uh, that particular aspect. On the question of uh, encouraging young people uh, to uh, be part of the different uh, executives uh, from district to provinces, and to national level. Uh, that is very, always very dependent on uh, people coming through the clubs. Uh, it is something that uh, certainly Tennis South Africa encourages. What is important though, it is important for people who serve on boards to understand tennis. And we are seeing a certain level of interest uh, rising amongst younger people. Uh, and we are hopeful that uh, younger people will in fact uh, start taking a more active role in tennis administration uh, as such. Um, to the question relating to the development hub in the Macquiland, um, correctly in the Northern Cape, um, as it has been indicated in the question relating to the distances uh, and once again resources, uh, etc. Uh, the Macquiland certainly has a, a long culture of, of tennis and, and it really comes down to the ability of tennis to support uh, to support people in that in those areas. People like the Kutsia family uh, have a long history in tennis in places like Springbok, mm -hmm. and wherever we are able to assist them, uh, we do. Uh, but uh, once again, resources are limited, and it's, it is uh, absolutely imperative that the districts uh, engage with local government to, to seek, uh, to seek um, assistance, financial assistance, where Tennis South Africa is able to source sponsors, and at the moment in the current economic climate, I think it's fair to say that sponsors are, are few and far between. Uh, and of course, sponsors are very um, specific in terms of what and where they want their, spend, their sponsorship money uh, to be spent. Uh, the, the question relating to safe, safeguarding, um, as Mr. Davids indicated, we have a very zero tolerance based approach to, uh, to safeguarding. In terms of the specific instance raised relating to the girlfriend of the uh, coach uh, who stabbed her, uh, and he is still incarcerated, um, to the point that um, he obviously uh, is current, as I say, is currently incarcerated, and Tennis South Africa uh, has totally suspended his membership to the point that um, if he is ever released from prison, 
uh, the likelihood of him uh, being expelled as a member of Tennis South Africa is probably certain. Uh, we have endeavored to reach out to his girlfriend. Um, I can say to you that all our attempts to reach out to her uh, have not elicited any form of response. So um, I'm not quite sure how we, we are supposed to, to deal with a uh, situation like that. I think it's also fair to say that there are other issues that have come to light with regard to this particular coach. Uh, we're taking a particularly hard line with the uh, academy that he works for as well. Uh, and uh, there's an investigation uh, on the go relating to his conduct within that academy. The, uh, the incident raised regarding to Curo in Hillcrest, uh, that, uh, that was dealt with uh, or is being dealt with by the public prosecutor. Uh, as to Tennis South Africa's position on that is that we are clearly watching the, the legal uh, process uh, that is being followed. The particular gentleman concerned, obviously, is not a citizen of South Africa and he's not, he is no longer in South Africa. Uh, I understand that he, in fact, was granted permission to leave South Africa by uh, the police. Uh, and, um, and, and that matter, that matter is, is ongoing. Uh, whatever support uh, the young lady uh, wished to receive from Tennis South Africa and her school, she's not a tennis player as such. Um, tennis South Africa has made it clear to the leadership at Kiro, uh, whatever we are able to do to assist, um, uh, we, are, we, we, will, we will do so. As such, we ha no, there hasn't been any reach out. I am in contact with the headmaster. Uh, I am based, for those of you who don't know, I am a resident of KwaZulu-Natal. I do happen to know the headmaster uh, at, at the particular school. And uh, he has, uh, in my last communication with him, he asked me to leave it with the school. And if, uh, if they wanted any assistance or further information, uh, he, he would contact me. With regard to the question around Soweto, uh, the particular coach in, in question has been suspended and uh, investigations are ongoing. Uh, part of the challenge relating to the allegations against him is that there, there, there have been no formal charges laid against the, the coach by any of the alleged um, um, people that he has uh, abused. Uh, they have either declined to become involved or have refused uh, to, um, uh, to, to lay any charges. That, that as it may be, uh, there is a disciplinary process uh, that is um, on the go at the moment with him. He is certainly not on our payroll. Uh, the challenge that you have with anybody uh, who is not on our payroll and who's been suspended is uh, we don't have any teeth in terms of telling the particular person that he is not allowed that he is not allowed to coach for reward on tennis courts that are not affiliated to Tennis South Africa. Uh, it is also beholden on us, not whilst uh, the process um, is uh, ongoing, that we cannot. We cannot publicize the, the gentleman's name um, as, as such because uh, that would possibly infringe his constitutional right to, to earn a living. Uh, Soweto as a particular stadium is a challenge. There are a number of uh, dissenting uh, groups within the community that are laying claim to, to the site. And uh, with regard to our future uh, plans with regard to that as a Pacific development hub, those are on hold. We are looking to have satellite development hubs and facilities around the Arthur Ashe Stadium. Uh, and that process um, will is currently on the go in terms of a tender process uh, where registered coaches who are looking to, to run those satellite hubs uh, uh, have, have until, in fact, the close of business today uh, to submit what their plans are and to see how these match with uh, our programs. The, um, the area of sponsorship, um, the area of sponsorship, as I've indicated in my presentation, uh, is always a challenge uh, in that uh, ideally we would like to become totally uh, uh, less dependent on sponsorship. Sponsorship uh, of the form that we currently receive is specific to certain projects or events as such, and uh, that, creates, um, that creates challenges when it comes to uh, doing less palatable forms or less visible forms of development that are sometimes critical. If you, as I use the example, if you look at a, a, country, a tennis country like Tennis Canada, who has something like 93% of their income totally um, non-dependent on, on sponsorship 
uh, sponsorship uh, rights to to tell you how they want it spent. Uh, they they certainly are able to um, have free money to inverted commas to spend on, on critical development areas, and that's where is something that we are looking uh, to achieve. In terms of South Africa's level of participation in tennis and the rest of Africa, we participate in the, uh, the uh, all the the main African uh, junior championships. Uh, last year, we were the African championships for the under 18s and under 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 16s. There are not too many uh, non-professional tournaments for seniors and um, and non uh, and people over the age of 30. Uh, that's a challenge uh, that uh, we are looking to address within South Africa in terms of what we call open tennis of people between the ages of 18 and 30. And we have a program that is looking to, to have uh, interprovincial tournaments for, for those top players who wish to play top flight tennis but don't want to be uh, professional uh, players. Uh, the, the question relating to the CEO of tennis and the CFO tennis, I, I think I might have misunderstood the question and that it perhaps related to the department and not to the federation. Uh, as you might all be aware, we are currently engaged in a process of appointing a new CEO. Uh, that process uh, in terms of advising the shortlist of people uh, ends uh, on Monday morning. Uh, I can say to you that there are seven um, candidates out of the 34 who have um, who applied, uh, of, of which uh, three, three of those seven are, are, are women or ladies. And uh, uh, that interview process will, will take place and there's a process where hopefully we will have a, a CEO in in uh, in place at latest the first of March uh, next year. In terms of our CFO, our CFO has um, an an honours degree in accounting science and has uh, just recently written the certificate in the theory of accounting, uh, which uh, if he passes, uh, and I'm confident that he will pass, he will write his first chartered accountant's board exam in uh, in uh, in February next year. To the question of the increase in membership, I can tell you that our current membership has increased over and above that which is in our report and is now in excess uh, of 34,000. To the question relating to uh, particularly school children, I can tell you that school children, school, school children uh, are members of Tennis South Africa by virtue of the school at which they belong being registered as a club, and they are not required to participate, uh, they are not required to pay anything. Uh, to, to be a, uh, a school member of, of Tennis South Africa. If any of those school children and most of them who do play competitive tennis in terms of the, the national ranking, et cetera, then uh, that is a different story. But the majority of school children who just simply wish to play school tennis and participate in the school, um, the school tournaments like the, the Rising Star event that, uh, uh, that is uh, detailed in our annual report, that those children are not required to, to make um, any payment. And therefore, uh, we, we endeavor to ensure that uh, money uh, is one of, it, one, money is not a, a, a disabling factor in terms of people getting access into participating in mainstream tennis. Uh, the question relating to administration diversity uh, in our report, we indicate that 58% of our staff um, our administrative staff are black people. 50% of those staff are, are women. In terms of the leadership, excluding the CEO who, whose position is um, vacant at the moment, three of our, uh, three of our four uh, senior staff are black and one and the other white person is a lady. Um, I can't give you uh, off the top of my head the demographics relating to uh, our over 35 uh, age group uh, or what we call masters. Our master's division, uh, other than I can say to you that I'm aware that there is significantly greater participation in our master's tennis events, uh, we, can, we, can provide, uh, we can provide the particular member with those details uh, after, after this report. Uh, in terms of our officiating demographics, I can tell you, because I've been an official and I sit on the officiating committee, that 89% of our officials are black. I can't give you, unfortunately, off the top of my head, the, the gender aspect, but I can assure you that uh, gender equality reflects, uh, is very similar uh, to our, um, our national um, uh, 48 
48 uh, percent women, 52 percent black. I think it's um, interesting to note, and it's very pleasing to note the number of of black officials who um, are invited to officiate uh, at the Grand Slams, like for instance the Australian Open and Wimbledon, uh, and also the the U.S. Open. Uh, Roland Garros is always a challenge in that they tend to be very insular and don't invite officials uh, from other countries. Uh, in terms of our coaching, once again, um, I will have to get you that uh, breakdown uh, unless um, unless Anthony has that at his uh, uh, at his uh, fingertips. The question relating to more development hubs, it's directly related to capacity and money. Uh, and as I've indicated to you, sponsors tend to be very specific. Uh, and um, and uh, where where they wish uh, and what they wish to sponsor um, and to get out into the rural areas and, and in terms of um, uh, upskilling uh, people uh, tends to be challenging. Although our um, as I've indicated, our BNP Paribas uh, program is is making significant inroads uh, into into that area. Uh, the question relating to facility maintenance, I, I think the DDG has indicated some of the challenges around that. Um, certainly, I think our biggest fear at Tennis South Africa is the number of clubs that are um, simply um, the, the municipalities are finding other uses for those clubs. We had a, for instance, a club uh, in the greater um, Kaoting area where suddenly uh, the, the municipality endeavoured to increase the the rental that was being paid by those club men or the club for the facility to an astronomical number because they'd had some property developer come and make make an offer. Uh, through the good offices of Sascock, we are looking to engage uh, with the main metros and and municipalities where those are risks. Um, it's also very frustrating that municipalities do not seem to be interested in um, not seem to be interested. In, in renewing leases for sporting facilities. And that is a challenge. And perhaps I can uh, ask and use this forum, in particular the DDG, uh, to assist in, in this regard with regard, uh, regarding to engaging uh, with, uh, with municipalities. The, um, uh, as you've seen, in terms of the schools in the rural areas, um, uh, Anthony will give you some more detail. Um, once again, it, it, it comes down to a level of capacity, but we are seeing a greater number of schools, rural schools, participating in our Rising Star uh, RCS program. Uh, in terms of the last, uh, the last speaker, in terms of her uh, questions relating to Africa Cares, uh, we are happy to share the report that we have given to the DGG. The DDG uh, on that uh, and uh, around uh, the challenges that were faced uh, around that event. Uh, first of all, can I underline that we simply looked to endorse and not sanction. Uh, sanctioning is a totally different situation and uh, you can only sanction events uh, that come via the, the, seven, um, the seven controlling uh, tennis bodies uh, in the world. Uh, this was a, an exhibition event, uh, yes, with a very good uh, principled uh, underlying project in terms of uh, gender-based gender -based violence. But I think in summary, uh, where the challenge, the main challenge lay uh, was around the question of, of money uh, and, um, and uh, the, the gate posts when money was supposed to have been uh, placed in bank accounts and it uh, not arriving. And then the ticket sales and the promotion uh, of the event um, sadly uh, turned out not to be uh, what they should have been. But as I say, um, we are happy to share that. Uh, women's tennis in South Africa. Uh, in April, we have two international events, a $60,000 uh, ITF event uh, preceded by a $25,000 event. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there are a number of other uh, ITF events, um, both in the open and in the junior uh, divisions. We're looking to have 15 ITF junior events in the next year, uh, of which uh, all of those have a, um, a section uh, for, for, for ladies um, as such. Um, I think the other the other specific point, uh, which, which uh, Mr. Murathani has indicated in terms of our mentorship program, is close to 69% of the uh, the teachers um, and coaches who participate in our empowerment, empowerment project from RCS uh, also um, 
uh, are also all women. So um, we, we believe that within our resources and our abilities and capacity, uh, we are promoting uh, women's tennis. Um, um, yeah, the final question relating to role, role models, um, and I accept that the challenge uh, lies, uh, um, I think our top uh, black player is, uh, uh, well, it is uh, Raven Carsons. Uh, he has been in that position for a number of years, preceded by, by Jeff Kutsia. Uh, there are a number of promising junior players that are looking to try and make their way uh, on the international um, circuit. Uh, it's expensive. I, I think to that, um, to, to my closing point, I, I think the professional, um, the professional business of tennis at the moment, and that's talking internationally, and I've just been at the International Tennis Federation Annual General Meeting, and the discussion around the financial viability of professional tennis players. Before COVID, it was estimated that the top 70 women and the top 70 men uh, in the world ranking uh, rankings were, were making a living. Uh, that now has dropped to the top 30 of both women and men that are making a living. I think we're all aware of the increased cost of traveling and accommodation and, and et cetera. Uh, and it is a real concern. And I think it's it's fair to say that uh, um, yeah, my, money money is a challenge, and uh, without any question, uh, if if we are to further uh, enhance and promote tennis, particularly amongst the black uh, uh, communities in South Africa, we we do need to find a way to financially support uh, black black players and people. Thank you, Chair. Um, could I hand over to Mr. Davids and then Mr. Murathani to um, possibly add a bit more detail and answer those questions uh, uh, in, in more detail that I haven't covered as a general format. Thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, Gavin, thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll, in, I'll, I'll start. The first one was, uh, in state institutions, do you have approvals to serve on these structures? So I could maybe say that I am a, a ward councillor, but I have expressed permission from from the, the whip to actually declare this and to, to, to serve on these structures. I think that's the first one to do, and I am the only one within the state institution that is actually on the board of Tennis South Africa. I think the next one to make very clear is that we have a board which is completely non-operational, and we, we stick to that. We are also a board of professionals that do not garner one cent, nor are we involved in anything in the business running of Tennis South Africa. We are a board of oversight. We are a board who operates as a board. We do not involve ourselves in the day-to-day. -day. We only step in if something's required. Otherwise, we remain a board. And as you know, with our last AGM, we once again, uh, and it's minuted, that no remuneration gets paid to any board member. I hope that uh, that clears that side out. And then maybe just one other point they were speaking about victim support. And it was widely documented that when a little girl in case it in drowned with the floods, she was eight years old. And she, the parents mentioned that she was a tennis player and Tennis South Africa immediately with DSAC, with SASCOC, put together a sizable amount of money and took it to the family and uh, shared it with them as well as our, our condolences in terms of that. So we, we definitely do look after anybody who is a victim and we get involved as much as we can. We just make absolutely sure we stay out of the legal process. And in that way, if somebody is charged, we do not defend. We suspend that person until the, the, the courts uh, have been dealt with. And we, we really always make sure we, we stay on that side of justice. Uh, I think, Gavin, you've covered everything uh, very, very well. I'm going to hand over to Anthony, who would maybe speak to all the participation questions and any, anything else. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, thank you very much, Riyadh. Um, yeah, I think uh, my colleagues have covered most part of the questions, but I would, I would like to touch, I'm going to just touch on the development programs in rural communities, uh, as well as the challenges uh, within the wheelchair tennis, wheelchair tennis uh, program space. So just, just in terms of the, the, the development programs in rural areas and what our plan is going forward is, uh, I think we have mentioned one, um, the development centers that we, have ro we are rolling out in the country in key parts of South Africa. And, um, and the amount, the significant amount that actually is invested. And just to give you an understanding of what is offered. So you find that there's a head coach who's hired full-time and assistant coaches who are paid on a monthly basis. We uh, 
provide tennis equipment, which I think many people who are familiar with tennis will know that tennis equipment is not very, uh, very cheap, um, uh, including kits for them and uh, funds for them to be able to travel, to be able to play in key tournaments, obviously to advance their tennis uh, careers. Um, and also, so apart from development centers, we are expanding uh, tennis uh, uh, hubs to ensure that we are able to uh, support hubs in different parts of the country because it's lesser, more, it's less expensive than development centers, which we literally take a full control and uh, take, uh, uh, are responsible for all the costs of operating the centers. So what, all, what we are also looking to do, we have the development and transformation uh, committee has been working on um, a program to, to empower black coaches in rural and uh, township communities to start their own academies because for, 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 for them to, to be sustainable, because what exists is in, in, the reason why perhaps a sport like tennis doesn't grow in a community where I come from in Skukune is because there's a coach who's coaching there, but kids can't really, mostly can't even, they, they, they're not charged. So the coach basically doesn't charge them anything. They are volunteers and they are unable to actually grow or, or rather make a living out of that. So we are helping them to, we have uh, uh, designed a program to help them start their own uh, academies to be able to be sustainable and to ensure that uh, in those rural and township communities, they start looking at it as, at, as a business to ensure that our, 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 our uh, those different uh, communities then are taken care of in terms of the growth of tennis. And uh, we have, I think, spoke, spoken extensively around the, the coaches mentorship program, which I think is an incredible program that Tennis Africa has seen. And what we realized was a barrier in, in terms of tennis growth has always been the issue of, but we can't grow tennis in rural and township communities because there aren't coaches. And uh, to, get, to get the coaching qualifications, it's also not very cheap. So what we have done is the coaches mentorship program have identifies every year, this is the fifth year, and over 345 coaches have now been empowered. And as we said, uh, more than 50% of those are women. So what happens is we provide them with skills and qualifications to be coaches. And they provide coaching in their rural and township communities. And I'll give you an example. There's a coach called uh, Tembi Matobela from a school in uh, Seychelles. She was part of this program. She started uh, the program at her school. And, and incredibly, her school was able to come to finish at number two in Limpopo and play at national finals uh, against some of the top schools in South Africa. So we are seeing a lot of those coaches going back to start coaching at their communities and are able to actually grow programs. And lastly, is the school support. As Kevin has indicated, the, the rising starts in a school because we realized another way for us to be able to actually grow the sport is let's get into schools because some schools at least they've got tennis facilities. So why don't we take advantage of that opportunity? And to ensure that we give him more uh, opportunities to rural and, uh, and um, township schools is the rising star tennis, kids play at no cost. We pay for their travel, their flights or, uh, or, or, or ground transport. We provide equipment to schools that do not have tennis equipment. And we, pro we, we, we try to get coaches to assist in some schools where there are no coaches. So that is the, everything, the accommodation is provided and sponsored fully by Tennis South Africa. So that is just how we're trying to ensure that we break into rural and, and township communities, which is why we were able to reach areas like Namakwaland, which are areas that are usually excluded and you beautiful ways in the central Karoo. And just lastly, I wanna to touch on wheelchair tennis. So the, the participation of wheelchair tennis, 90% of the participants, 97% of the participants are black. And they are from rural and township communities. I'm talking about individuals that are from very, very disadvantaged communities and families, and they depend on uh, uh, the disability grant. Most of them don't have parents. So we are very fortunate to have volunteers who are able to get in those space and assist in being the guardians to ensure that they are looked after when they travel. So we provide, the, 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 why the issue of not having a sponsor has affected the program greatly. I think we have got such an incredible and um, uh, uh, success story in wheelchair tennis because of the athletes we've produced and where the International Tennis Federation rates South Africa in terms of wheelchair tennis development with I think Belinda did mention that we have nearly 500 participants um, that plays wheelchair tennis. So we provide coaching, meaning coaches are hired and are paid on a monthly basis by Tennis South Africa at all centers that exist. And we, 
we provide tennis equipment. We also provide wheelchairs. I'm not sure how many people would know the cost of wheelchairs, but they're quite expensive. Uh, so we provide wheelchairs for each of them to be able to play the sport. We cover all their travel. We cover stipends, obviously, to the coaches. And uh, we cover entry fees. So in, in many sports, and especially able-bodied, every player pay for their entry fees. But we understand the background of the wheelchair tennis players. They come from very disadvantaged families then they cannot afford. And if we were to say they must pay, then we wouldn't have even one wheelchair tennis player play. And we cover their accommodation and mostly we also cover their meals. So if they, for instance, there's an event, uh, an international tournament uh, taking place, we need to cover costs for all the players to come across all different provinces to come to Johannesburg or wherever the event is taking place. We need to cover accommodation for all the players that are participating for a duration of a week. We need to cover entry fees for all of the players. We need to provide chairs for all the players. We need to ensure that all the players have got equipment. So just to give an understanding, and that's where the biggest challenge that we sit with. And as, like I said, we, I think we're very fortunate that we to, to still keep this program running because of the support we receive from the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. I'll leave it there. I see my colleague Ria just got a hand up. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yes, I just want to know from, from the Chair uh, if I can speak. I know she, 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 the chair did indicate that she only wants people to speak once, but maybe she'd indulge us. Okay, I will allow you. Maybe there was something that you slipped to um, share with us. Over yes. to you. Thanks a lot, Chair. So maybe just the two things when you're speaking about role models. So maybe the first one is, and Anthony can share it with, with the committee, is we have the Monsi brothers. And when we had our national schools championships on the Rising Stars, they played an exhibition match. So we have two very able young men who are excellent ambassadors uh, for South Africa, and they are very, very good role models as well. And then we have an involvement with Liverpool, where young black girls are being fast-tracked, and they get paid so that they can afford to travel and play in top competitions and they are exceptionally good players. So we have a very strong generation of both male and female players coming through the ranks and those that have come through the ranks so that we, we have a current generation of role models all the way down from under 12 up to under 18. And in fact, uh, Leo, one of our, uh, our players has just been accepted as a IT, ITF development uh, hub player to go and spend time at the tennis center in Morocco as well. So I just wanted to make that point. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Davids, for that information. Members, we have received responses from the department and from Tennis South Africa. I first wanted to I uh, thank the department. Thank you very much uh, for your detailed response, uh, DDG and your team. And then to Tennis South Africa, thank you also to you uh, and the team, Mr. Gavin Crooks, the president. Uh, and now the Portfolio Committee on Sports, Arts and Culture have an idea what is going on in the development programs with Tennis South Africa. And we also see forward to see you again and you may invite us to one of your uh, games when you have uh, uh, games in the new, new um, near future. So we thank you very much for your contributions today and it is really pearls under our hearts as the committee that we heard about sports in our community so that they can be healthy and also to the schools. To, and that is what we say in our slogan, a child in sport is a child out of court. So keep up with the good work that you have done and already busy with and all the best for all your um, engagements with, with, with other uh, uh, parties to, to, to come on board to assist you in any developments that you are having. I will give over now to our Deputy Minister, 
Min uh, Deputy Minister Mafu, uh, the platform is yours so that you can share with us what you have read out of this presentation from uh, Tennis South Africa, seeing that it is the first time that we have met them. So we wanted to hear from you. What did you experience from the uh, presentation and forwards? I thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. And, and greetings once more to, to the honorable members. And of course, uh, to the leadership of the, the Tennis South Africa. Chair, I just wanted to first make a, a comment that um, to, to the president of Tennis South Africa, Gavin Crooks and the team, I think uh, the, the portfolio committee members would agree with me that it was a bit refreshing to interact with them in terms of them sharing the information and the way they have answered the questions that have been asked by, by the members. The members um, are more knowledgeable now about what is happening around tennis South Africa in the country. Uh, and I think we, I just want to really appreciate them and, and how they, they had taken into interacting with the portfolio committee. Those questions that they couldn't uh, respond to, they had made a commitment to say they would send the responses or they would follow up on those responses. Quite refreshing. Thank you so much to the leadership of Tennis South Africa. Of course, having said that, uh, what they had shared with us, it, it also uh, doesn't mean that um, all the work is done. They are also clear into saying there are still gaps. There's more that still needs to be done. But we all appreciate the fact that they are making strides to make sure that tennis is actually accessible to every child in the country. Thank you once more. I wanted to respond on, and I want to appreciate what they had raised in their report around the issue of um, winning the schools, because that for me is very critical. And I think if they, in the next time when they come back to the committee, they can probably give more detail on that twinning of schools, particularly the disadvantaged and those that are advantaged so that we can understand better when they talk about them making sure that they make this the sport available even to those that are not available. So when they do the report next time, that training, they must not they must not just mention it. I think they must get into detail so that members of the portfolio committee can have the the full you know uh, information around that. And the the other issue that I wanted to raise for me, uh, Chair is what uh, Honorable Veronica raised around the issue of the safeguarding, the cases that she has raised. Of course, President has responded to them very much, thank you. But I thought it would be also be very fruitful to the committee to say all the federations that are coming to report to the portfolio committee, I think this, the issue of safeguarding must be standard in their reports. It must not come because a member of the portfolio committee has asked the questions. It must come voluntarily. If there is nothing, it can be said safeguarding, no cases that are pending. But I think we must make it standard, particularly because we are living in a country that is uh, very high on gender-based violence. So I thought, listen, listening to what member Veronica has raised and the responses, let's make this issue of safeguarding standard. When, when federations are coming to the portfolio committee to report, this must be part of what they, they respond to us. And maybe, lastly, I know President responded to Honorable Nshongo about the Africa Cares Challenge and, and the report, but maybe at some point, Tennis South Africa need to look at how they endorse the exhibition uh, tournaments that are coming into the country because when then things fall apart, most people wouldn't know that it's not Tennis South Africa that is hosting the match. They would think that it is Tennis South Africa and yet 
Kenya South Africa had just endorsed an exhibition. So we need to find a way of how then do we manage this? Because I know on social media, the whole last two days, there's been people wanting their refunds on this match because they had paid and, and now they are not gonna go because the match has been moved to Soweto and they don't want to go to Soweto and a lot of things, but people think that it's tennis South Africa. And, and, and so we need to, to find a way of making sure that we insulate tennis South Africa from these exhibition matches so that when things fall apart, it doesn't look like tennis South Africa is not the one that is doing the job. Generally, I'm quite happy with the report and I'm very happy with, uh, with, with, with everything that they have said. But I think those are the things for me that they need to tighten up. And, and, and thank you very much for, for the fact that you've been very open and, and, and forthcoming with all the information that the portfolio committee has been requesting. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, DM. Yes, the emphasis uh, once again is on safeguarding must be standard. Thank you very much, uh, 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 DM, for, for giving the highlights of, on the presentation and to the responses. Um, and also to Tennis South Africa, You've heard what uh, DM has just mentioned now. So take care. Um, highlighted on what you have to highlight it, correct it, what you have to correct it, or add what you have to add. And all the best for all the work that you have to, to be done with. Come to the end of the presentations and also the responses. There's another point on our agenda. So Thank you, uh, DM, if you wanted to stay on DM, it, it's, um, it will be a pleasure. We have minutes to adopt now. So we will release Tennis South Africa. Thanks for being part with us in today's meeting. Thank you, Chair. I'm leaving with Tennis South Thank Africa. Thank you. I'm also leaving. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. DM. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Didi. G and your team. In the quarterfinals. Yes, we see you, everyone. Good news. Good news. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We just need to get my father there. Maybe Tennis South Africa board should take over the SAFA board. Okay. We will wait. We will wait for our invitations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, DDG and your team. Thank you very much. Members, we have come to the point where we have to adopt our minutes. Our minutes will be the date of the 15th November's uh, meeting. The, let me see, yes. The minutes or to adopt is on the 15th November's minutes and the 25th. Um, Zolaka, can you please reflect us on the 15th November minutes? Thank you. There it is. Yes, go up. Yes. And we have received this minutes members. So I take it as a yes that you have go through the minutes. Yes, your patient, we went through the minutes. Thank you, Honorable Joseph. So far that uh, I've uh, also read through the uh, minutes and I couldn't find any uh, red underlined word or something to correct. So the minutes is there, uh, honorable members. Anyone who wanted to adopt the, uh, the mm -hmm. minutes or something highlighted from the minutes, 
I saw the end of uh, Honorable Zondi. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I move that to a talk in any extent. Thank you, Honorable Zondi. Any second? Mama, what is second? Amabola. Thank you for second on the adoption of the agenda. We can move to the second um, minutes on for of the 25th of November. Yes, there it is. Move, yes. Members, and there is the draft minutes of the 25th of November. If there is anything, you can mention it now. If you are satisfied, I wait for an adoption on the minutes. In a second, I saw the hand of Honorable Malumane. Thank you, Chair. I move for the Yes, adoption. Honorable. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I move for the adoption of the minutes. Thank you very much, Honorable Malumane. Move for the adoption. Are there any seconda? Mama Volo. <laughs> Amabola, you are very active today. Thank you for that. Thank you for the minutes. All uh, two sets of minutes are adopted, the 15th and the 25th of uh, November. Honorable members, thank you very much for uh, having set this day aside for our meeting. And if I'm correct, it is the last meeting of us before the closing of parliament uh, next week, Tuesday. So uh, we won't see each other maybe on TV, if you like to be on TV, uh, but have a nice Christmas with your family. We were very absent in our, our family parts or uh, this year. So if you have the chance to be, uh, 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 with them, enjoy it, be safe on the roads wherever you go, and um, take care. I thank you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy